Hi, I'm Mamata. And in my last video, I talked about what limiting beliefs are in general. And in this video, I'm going to go much more into depth as to what limiting beliefs are from biological perspective, like from chemical perspective. So when I was doing my research on limiting beliefs, what they are, I was only finding books and researches which focused on the effects of what they are and more from a psychological perspective, how they impact you and things like that. But I could not find what exactly they are from biological perspective because if something is affecting us psychologically, then there has to be a biological component to that as well. And that is something I couldn't find an answer to anywhere. So that is when I channeled the answer. So Archangel Michael is so good at giving answers in these things. Let's uh, get started. As I said in my previous video, the link to which you can find in the description, beliefs are your perception of the world and how you view the world is completely depend on how you view yourself. So if you have a very positive perception about yourself, you will experience more positive beliefs and hence a more positive life, a positive experience most of the time. And limiting beliefs create negative experience because all events, all experiences inherently don't have any meaning. It is our belief system that creates meaning. Like those of you who are into quantum science, you will know that the quantum realm is completely shaped by our thoughts and beliefs and is totally dependent on the observer. The quantum particles will behave differently if the observer is changed because that is exactly how this reality works, who the observer is. So each observer is different and hence the reality they experience is also different because your shape, your thoughts shapes your reality. To give you some idea how limiting beliefs are created, the primary way of getting a limiting belief is through trauma. In our childhood, there could be certain experiences that had created negative perception about ourselves. So something even simple like, say, a parent scolding a child can create limiting beliefs in the child because for a child, the parent is the whole world. So even the slightest of scorn can leave them hurt. When limiting beliefs are formed, there are parts fragmentation that happen. I'm not going to talk about parts in this video. I'll create a separate video on parts. And it also creates a lot of negative emotion. So a limiting belief is held down in your system, pinned, you could say, nailed down with the negative emotion that was created during that event that actually created the negative belief. So that singular event can create either one or multiple limiting beliefs. The trauma holds the belief in place so that it doesn't change. And from that point onwards, your perception about your life changes. It is not positive or innocent anymore. There are negative perception because now you are afraid that if you behave in a specific way, there will be negative consequences. So this is one of the examples that I gave as to how beliefs are formed, the negative ones. Uh, negative beliefs can also be passed down from your ancestors and this is talked extensively in the book by Mark Wallin the name of the book is it didn't start with you genetically also beliefs can be passed down it doesn't depend on which number of ancestor it can come from it can come from any of your grandparents your parents or even ancestors way earlier because all the genetic material is contained and nothing, no information is actually lost. So you may also inherit beliefs that are not yours. And this, when you are doing a release using the mental and emotional technique, um, it will, your unconscious mind will show you which ancestor and which event had created that belief in that ancestor which was passed down to you. So that is a fun exercise actually. And another way that beliefs can be passed down to you, be it positive or negative, is uh, your past lives. So irrespective of whether you believe in them, in my mental and emotional release sessions, I have had almost 80 to 90% of my beliefs passed down from my past life. It's like I only see the past life events that had created the belief in that version of me 
and it was passed down in this lifetime for some people it can be heavily inherited from the past especially star seeds apart from these ways if you have adoptive parents even then you can carry their limiting beliefs through electromagnetic vibrations meaning the way they live their lives and the ideas they hold their perception about reality can be non verbally passed on to children even if they are adoptive because children acclim- acclimatize to their parents and they simply absorb what the parents believe to be true without any question so in that manner also you can acquire limiting beliefs even from your adoptive parents just simply by living with them and it usually happens to children before the age of 7 you can still have limiting beliefs formed after the age of 7 but those would mostly be like triggered or in some way connected to the core beliefs that were formed before the age of 7 now going into the biological perspective of beliefs this is something i had to channel from archangel michael because i couldn't find any scholarly article that goes into depth and explains what exactly these beliefs are biologically speaking so the answer i received from michael is that beliefs are neural networks which are not following a normal path a healthier path that it would have usually taken most people think that the uh, consciousness or the subconscious or unconscious mind is residing in the brain now this is a myth i want to break and i have done extensive research on it neurons are not only contained in the brain the bra- brain has 2 billion neurons but the human body other organs and other systems also have neural network so for example the heart has 40000 neurons and has its own brain it has been proven by scientists from the heart math institute they have done 25 years of research on the heart itself the heart's electromagnetic field is also three times larger than that of the brain that is one example the skin has 2 million neurons the entire skin of the body the kidneys have 40000 neurons the gut the entire gut system starting from your mouth to uh, to your in us oh sorry i would like to correct the brain has 100 billion neurons the organs apart from the brain also have consciousness because it's the neuron that creates the ability to perceive and what you you traditionally know as consciousness so in that sense these organs have consciousness of their own and they are interconnected with the brain and with each other there is communication going throughout the beliefs are not just in the brain they are distributed all throughout your body and when i used to do belief release i have experienced certain portions of my body expanding or relaxing or certain negative sensation from certain parts of my body disappearing when the belief goes away those are like the physical evidence that i have from my own experience where i felt it in my body limiting beliefs are not restricted to your ba- brain it is throughout your body wherever there is a neural network even other organs can hold on to limiting beliefs similarly the unconscious mind which holds on to these beliefs are also distributed throughout the body it's not just in the brain so that is one mind blowing statistic that is important for you to know about belief system and consciousness in general so this diagram that you see i have taken it from the internet this is like a crude representation of how neural networks are so ordinarily a neural network is a cluster of neurons and neurons have these nucleus type shape and they will have an extension that connects to another re- neuron so these blobs that you see are the junctions and the extensions are where the information travels and this is like connected to another neuron so this is how the neurons are interconnected as you can see and this interconnection creates and allows neurons to transfer information within each other this is how the information flows in uh, through different neural network and this kind of network exists and is connected interwoven all throughout the body not just the brain and it's the brain is also connected to the body using the vagus nerve this is a typical like an example of neural system now when we form a habit or a belief then 
despite having a large neural system, the body or mind, whatever you would like to call, tends to use a specific portion of the neural network more often because that is the shortest part or that is the safest part. The reasons could be many. So this red network that you see is symbolic of the portion of neurons that is more used as compared to the entire network. When belief systems are formed, instead of having a healthy network, it tends to create an unhealthy network, which is longer or slower or more painful. That usually happens because the regular network is disrupted. So for example, if, if you are seeing this red lines here, say if a limiting belief is formed, so instead of this path, a new neural path will be created, where say a longer path is like from here to here is going to be used by the mind more often instead of the shorter red path. This network starts getting used less often and the longer path starts getting used more often because there are negative emotions here which like prevents the conversation between the neurons to happen in the straightforward fashion. So it happens in a different route. When you release limiting beliefs, we release the negative emotions first before we do the uh, negative belief release because these emotions are actually what is pinning the belief down. So if you don't release those before you release the belief, chances are high the belief will not be released because the neurons will still be held in a specific way. So when you release a negative emotion and the belief, then this longer path of information flow that was happening will again change and a newer path will be formed as you can see below. This network will change and a new set of neurons are going to be used to create a new set of communication channels because now the negative emotions are not there to prevent or obstruct the flow of information. So this is very critical to understand because limiting beliefs are a specific configuration of neurons in the sense like how the ne neurons are communicating with each other and how often and which networks are activated. In NLP, it is uh, said that negative emotions and even beliefs and the subsequent events that has triggered the same belief are stored as a gestalt. A gestalt is a combination of events. There will be a bunch of neural networks which will light up or fire up, which are connected to the same meaning that you give to events. The meaning that you make of something is depending on the neural network configuration and which networks are activated, which ones are not activated. And every time you change beliefs or release long-held traumas and negative emotion, these neural networks also change in you. So it is like a live system. It's a li living, breathing system in the body. A negative belief is like a specific way the neuron communicates, which is unhealthy and not good for you or the body. But your unconscious mind thinks that there is a danger in not holding on to that belief. So it continues to hold on to that negative belief because it has a secondary gain. Now, what is a secondary gain? It is a clinical term to explain a very simple phenomena, which is all negative beliefs that you have are serving a purpose. It is helping you do something that you may not be consciously aware of. And the main reason why releasing limiting belief is so hard on itself is because your unconscious mind holds on to the belief thinking that, oh, these beliefs are meeting these needs and there is no other way for me to meet my needs. So I'm going to keep holding on to them. To release this resistance, which is very difficult to do on your own. Allow the unconscious mind to find other ways that it can get its need met without holding on to the belief. And that is when the unconscious mind becomes ready to release it. So that is a whole different process altogether, but just giving you an overview. Changing a belief technically means that you are doing a neurosurgery on yourself. Basically, you're changing your neural communication, the network that you have in terms of which networks will be fired and wired together moving forward when you change them. You are also releasing all the 
negative emotion which gets stored as negative chemicals or toxins that are holding and pinning the belief down your behavior your emotions your thoughts your actions your decision who you are as a person will completely transform and change when you release these negative beliefs like i have seen it first time in my life i've seen uh, such example in my client's life so for example before i release a belief i am not good enough which was affecting the relationship sector of my life i used to also like i did not realize it back then but i realized it after releasing the belief is i was too afraid to charge the prices that i felt is a valid for the value that i offer in my services because i felt i was not good enough so when i was releasing this belief from my relationship sector the advantage with doing these release work is it just doesn't affect one area of life it also affects other areas of life so the moment i release this belief it not only improves my relationships but i also realize that i'm actually delivering a lot of value in my services and i felt i was undercharging my prices i was able to raise my prices at least two to three times more than what i was charging earlier because i felt it to be so natural and my fear that nobody will pay for it was also gone and people actually were more than happy to pay those prices so when you release your beliefs around worthiness you will see the impact in how you make a sale or what you ask from your clients or how much you charge or how much salary you ask for because you will feel that like, yeah you are deserving and you are worthy of what you are asking because you do add value to so be able to start seeing the value that you offer and bring to the table this is how impactful releasing limiting beliefs are that i'm just sharing one example i have seen people's lives change completely some people have changed countries after releasing belief something that they had been wanting and desiring for so long but i couldn't do because of their fears the results are humongous and i might discuss that at some other point of time changing your belief also means that you are becoming aware of your subconscious thoughts and patterns the subconscious is not controlling you anymore you are becoming in charge of your reality and you can become the master manifester that you always wanted to be to create more positive versions of reality that you prefer and enjoy so that is another benefit of releasing limiting belief i created this fun image to give you some idea think of you being made of love this pink person and this is like this pink cloud think of it as god source energy the material the source material that has created everything all that is and you are also created from that same material the source the god material and you are made of unconditional love but with our life experiences or whatever things we have chosen these think of these pebbles as limiting beliefs they cloud you they cloud your self perception because you have forgotten who you are and you don't remember this creates a forgetting and sets you off in the path of remembering who you are so the more you start releasing limiting beliefs like from the left side to the right side you will eventually be moving towards your true self which is the unconditional love that you are you will be changing as a person you will become a better version of you the core true vibration that you are always which is made of unconditional love as i have said before all limiting beliefs are based on self hate when you release it it basically as you can see on the sliders on the left when you have a negative belief it the slider is more self hate than love and when you release the belief then there is more love and less of self hate or no self hate at all and even if you make a smallest of change in your belief system even then you can shift timelines so that is all folks if you have questions about whatever i talked about something that was not clear or you want to know more feel free to comment i love reading the comments and answering them so i hope you enjoyed this video